stack of questions to go through. I will read aloud the questions, and then this will be not unlike Jeopardy. I am Alec Trebek. <laughs> you will intuit and decide among yourselves who may or may not have the best answer. Wrestle, survival of the fittest, over the microphone. You have one minute to struggle desperately to answer this question. Follow up from your fellow members, another minute, perhaps another minute, and if I grow weary of the conversation, we are moving on to the next question. Because that is what democracy is all about. <laughs> Let us begin with the first question, which appears to me to well be a federal question. <laughs> What will you do to support President Obama's efforts at immigration reform? What will you do to support President Obama's efforts at immigration reform? They're not wrestling over the mic. Yes. <laughs> the president is going to send his proposal, his uh, legislation to Congress uh, before the end of January. Uh, and with it will come a path to citizenship and legalization, which I think is central to any comprehensive immigration reform. It will codify the DREAM Act into law. And more importantly, it will deal with the issue that is uh, burning in all our communities, as that's family unification. It will still deal with border security. But we have a, you know, we had a, to talk about a fiscal cliff, we have a moral cliff. That if we don't deal with this issue, yeah, and, uh, and, I, and I'm glad the President has kept his commitment to make it a priority, uh, and I think that there is finally a sense of Congress, whether it is from a heartfelt sense to do something or a political sense that we better do something or it's going to get worse, uh, that, that we are going to have to deal with this issue. But those two components, pathway to citizenship, family unification, codify the DREAM Act, for me, I will, I'll, I'll, I'm supporting the President because those are integral to what he's proposing and I agree with him. Well, we'll look forward to seeing the President's proposals and hopefully they will come to us soon. I believe we have a very narrow window to get this issue on the table in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. The next 12 months are going to be crucial, in fact, the next six months to making this issue, making it possible for this issue to be resolved. You know, I've spent a lot of time uh, the last six years as Congressman Gifford's district director with a primary responsibility for working with our border communities, uh, ranchers, business people, and others, about securing their area so that they feel safe in their homes. And I will continue to work on that as a, as a primary issue. When one of their own was killed two and a half years ago, it sent a shockwave through the area in which they live. And I want to make sure that they don't feel unsafe in their homes and that businesses can flourish there. Having said that, in my opening remarks, I also said, and I believe very strongly, that we must move forward to fix the broken immigration system. And that means a number of things for me. First of all, I've been a supporter of the DREAM Act since it was first proposed, and I will continue to support it. Hopefully we can, as Congresswoman Grijalva said, codify it. Uh, it passed the House of Representatives. It needs to come back to us and go on to the Senate and be signed into law by the President. When I talk to the ranchers and business people, chambers of commerce representatives and others, about what we need to do uh, about people who are coming here to work and not coming here documented, they will agree, and I agree with this, that we need a guest worker program to allow people to come here safely, legally, and return home when they need to do that. And finally, we have to figure out what to do about the 12 million people here in this country who are living in the shadows. We need to know who they are, we need to bring them out of the shadows, they need to take their place in line so that they can move forward toward legal status. And let me just say one more thing about something that doesn't get discussed very often. Now, when I talk to people in Douglas and in Nogales, uh, particularly the business people and the Fresh Produce Association, they really want their federal representatives to work hard to make sure that we have enough inspectors on the border to let people come here quickly so we can have good, strong commerce back and forth between ourselves and Mexico, one of our strongest economic partners in, in the whole country and in, in the world. We have to do better in that regard. So these are part of, parts of the immigration reform package that I'm hoping we'll see from the President, and I certainly will support in Congress.
Um, I, I, I agree very much with what Congressman Grijalva said, but I think there's another facet of uh, the local issues surrounding immigration that we also have to uh, make sure gets included in that. And that is a discussion and uh, some policy changes that will put an end to the deaths of the desert that have transpired uh, over the past uh, 15, 20 years. It's time for all of that to end. And, and uh, those of us who are people of faith uh, need to gather together and stand up to any adversity to all of that. Because uh, it is really a sad, horrible situation that's taken place. Pima County has taken the brunt of it uh, financially in that uh, we go out into the desert and collect those cadavers as well as providing the autopsies for all the unidentified um, immigrants that are found in the desert across the entirety of the Arizona-Mexico border. So I just wanted to make sure we mentioned that as a part of this discussion because I think it's a very important part of it that has been tragic. More I add to that, that I think that the mayor uh, has been a, a champion on. We are addressing it at the council level is to uh, further develop the commercial relationships that we have across the border. Uh, not only increasing the staffing at the ports of entry, but increasing the infrastructure on both sides so that you don't pinch down uh, to uh, two lanes once you get through that port of entry. We are losing commerce to the surrounding states. It's critical that both at the state level and the federal level that we, the funding comes forward so that we can uh, increase the uh, ability for commerce to get through that, uh, through there. The Macabedores are, are thriving, but they're, uh, they're needing to make sure that we are needing to make sure that we don't lose uh, the, the commercial business that belongs in the city of Tucson and Pima County instead of going over to Texas and Mexico or in California. Thank you. Um, I also, I agree with what's been said already. I support um, immigration reform, the DREAM Act, and all that was said before. But I also wanted to uh, mention uh, the border um, because like Yaquis, I am a member of the Pasco Yaqui tribe and also Tohonwatans and other people. You know, the border, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us, and we have people on both sides of the border, and it's a major issue uh, when, when people want to close down the border because it does not allow easy access for us to go down there for celebrations, for um, ceremonies, and for them to come up here for the same. So I'd like to mention that. I, one other thing, uh, I just did a tour of Yuma, and, and if you had a salad today, um, I'm not sure how many people know that in the winter time, 80% of the of the lettuce and the greens that are eaten in the U.S. in the winter time come from Yuma, and who picks those? The the residents, uh, citizens of Sonora. So we need that. Yeah. Well, I certainly want to echo what Congressman Barber said about the fact that we need a safe and uh, secure border. <laughs> you know, and one thing, and uh, at the state, we definitely need to work at the transportation and infrastructure so that we can create, they call it an inland port, but basically be able to take stuff from Wymas, ship it up here, and have a port just north of Tucson where we can take it from truck to rail. That's so important not only because it creates jobs, but it lowers the cost of shipping and distribution for our manufacturing. And one thing that I think is very important that I, I would hope and challenge our um, federal representatives to do because it protects our border and because it facilitates trade and transportation is to make sure that the Mariposa Port of Entry is fully staffed from the Border Patrol and from Customs. So I would hope that we could all work together on that. <laughs> 